Hey, I thought I'll tell you how to become a better photographer. <laughs> yeah, there's an elephant in the room, like who am I to tell you? Maybe you are not even interested in becoming a better photographer. Maybe you are interested in the social aspects of photography. Just like taking snapshots with your friends and then sharing the pictures and having a good time. Nothing wrong with that. But I, um, I was thinking like, maybe I can talk to people such as myself who are interested in getting more consistent with our work and who are interested, who have inbuilt motivation to become a better photographer. My learning so far. So bear with me, take, if there's something that inspires you, that's good, if, if there is not, just forget about this video. <laughs> hey, so how to become a better photographer? Couple of things that won't make a difference. First, gear. It doesn't really matter what kind of gear you use. Make yourself a pinhole camera out of tin foil and a shoebox. And, and you can take excellent pictures. If you go to, by the way, to any online discussion boards or if you watch YouTube channels about photography, chances are the gear stuff is on top of the list and that's the least meaningful stuff. What comes to improving your photography and becoming better photographer? That's meaningless. Skills. That's another thing that many people say that I don't know how to take better photographs. I don't have the skills. And to a certain extent that may be true, but photography is very forgiving art form. If you want to, le want to learn to play piano, you need to practice years and years. If you want to take good photographs, it takes you probably a couple of hours to learn your camera inside out. Um, if you want to learn the basics of composition and all those kind of basic artistic forms. That's also yet another hour. Seriously. I mean, you can, you can learn the, the basics of photography within, within a day. And, and for example, technical stuff, take a fully automatic camera, take your iPhone and shoot with that. You don't need to learn anything about the technical aspect to get started. Then uh, some of us say that we don't have time to improve our photography, we don't have time to take pictures. And that's also not true. We have time for anything we want, but not for everything. So um, then you are not motivated enough if you don't have time. And that's another problem. And, and, and it's, it's a, I don't judge you on that. You have maybe more important and interesting things to do, but don't blame that you don't have time for photography because then you just have time, a little bit less time for something else if you put it into photography. So we all have the same amount of time. <laughs> Gear won't help you, skills won't help you, getting time from somewhere won't help you. So for me, and that's so true for me, so what are the things that are preventing me to become better photographer and that I suggest that you think about too because I'm Pretty sure that they are, at least for some of you, you get the same reasons. Those two reasons are that I'm lazy and the second one that I believe in luck. So laziness to me means that um, instead of going out when the weather is perfect for photography, I choose to sit on our coach and watch television. Laziness to me means that instead of trying one more picture with the model and trying to get the right expression on her face. I'm calling it a day and that's it. Or that I don't do enough post-processing. I don't work hard enough in my dark room or I don't spend enough time with the Lightroom software to, to work on my pictures. By the way, I only do things that I know in my Lightroom that I know I can do also in my darkroom. So I'm not suggesting that to become a better photographer you need to do photoshopping. That's not at all what I think. I think photoshopping is no longer photography, but now we are sidetracking here. That's the subject of another video. Laziness, many forms, uh, and then luck. Luck is another enemy of my photography, that I believe in luck. I'm a little bit like a monkey with a typewriter. And I think that 
give me enough bananas and enough time that I eventually type in war and peace. Because <laughs> I'm lucky. And that might happen. It might happen to monkey too, to a monkey too. But even if I manage to type in war and peace accidentally on my typewriter, it won't make me a better author. I just got lucky with that one particular novel. But if I try to accidentally type in another novel, it's going to be equally difficult. That first novel didn't take me anywhere. The same thing with photography. If you just trust in luck and you just got lucky once and you got one really nice picture, that won't make you a better photographer because you don't know what happened. You didn't work for your photo. You just took a snapshot and got lucky. Nothing wrong with that. That may be a good picture. And, and once again, I'm not saying that luck has nothing to do with photography. Certainly it has. But to base your photography on your luck, unless you are extremely lucky, I think that's a wrong strategy. Let me show you a few pictures to demonstrate what I mean. I had just bought myself my first film camera, a Rolex Core. First film camera since 1997. I was in Los Angeles pumping gas at the gas station to my car. And then as I was pumping it at the gas station, I noticed that there are planes landing at LAX. It was close to the airport. And then I also saw a lamppost with birds on it. And I immediately started to think about, hey, that's a cool connection there. Stationary birds and then planes landing. I parked my car, took my roller cord and started to look for a compositional idea where I could get the lamp post and then the planes landing. And I watched several planes landing so I knew approximately what's going to be their line. I positioned myself right and I waited for the longest time to get this pitch. It wasn't luck because I really planned for this and it wasn't lazy because I really spent time waiting for the right opportunity. And by the way, then I, I really like this picture. This was one of the first roles I, I took. One of the first roles I ever took with medium format and one of the first roles I took when I got back into analog photography. So then I sent it to this local competition and I won an honorary mention. Uh, and I got so encouraged by it because that showed to me that if I put in an effort, I can get a decent pitch. And so that improved my photography. Not only did I get a good picture, but I also got a motivational boost. It taught me the uh, value of being patient and finding the right angle. So that improved my photography, that picture, because I put in an effort. Another, th another picture is, uh, it's taken with the pinhole camera. So uh, when I first got into pinholing, that's a few years ago, uh, I immediately thought that it would be nice to take some pinhole pictures on my boat because I, I have a nice boat and I take a lot of pictures on my boat. And I took my pinhole camera on my boat and this is probably the first picture I took there. This is not a very good picture, but it taught me something. It taught me that I can actually take long exposure pinhole pictures on the boat and get interesting um, characteristics like uh, like moving background and stationary boat. So then one day um, I had a plan. I planned it ahead and uh, went on a lake and it took me over three hours. I'm thinking like th at least three hours to take this pitch. Waiting for the right lightning, driving my boat to the location where the background is perfect and then positioning, really composing the picture perfectly so that I knew what I wanted. I wasn't lazy, I went out 
spent a couple of hours on the lake, really worked hard to get this composition. And I didn't believe in luck because I had honed my skills by taking a few pinhole pictures on a boat, so I knew how pinholing will work on a boat. I took this picture, sent it to a New York Photography Award and won the gold award for this picture. I'm not bragging about these awards, but uh, it kind of shows to me personally that if I plan my pictures carefully, if I'm intentional, mm, don't believe in luck, and then I put in an effort, I really work hard, I, I can take better pictures. And I'm pretty consistent now with my pinholing on a board, on a moving object. And I think a lot of pictures like that, that became a skill for myself. Not only did I get a good picture, but that improved my photography skills. And that's, I guess, what I'm trying to explain here. One more thing uh, that I want to show you. I had just gotten a Holga, and I was still learning this very primitive camera. It was intriguing. And I knew that since this cost me like maybe 20, 30 euros, I can take this to places where I wouldn't take more beautiful cameras, like rain and slate and, and all kind of dirty conditions. So I put my boat on a lake a few years ago. It was really early in the, in the spring. And while it was already on the lake, we got one more major snowstorm. So I thought, hey, that's a neat idea, uh, photo idea. Let me go on a lake during a snowstorm and take some pictures. But I didn't dare to take any better camera, so I took my Holka. I also wanted to learn how to take those kind of Holga pictures on a boat. And in my mind, the plan was to get that anxiety of a snowstorm, that depressing, that harsh feeling. And then I took these pictures. I kind of like these pictures, so now I've taken a lot of these kind of pictures ever since with my Holga and I became really a fan of Holga based on these pictures because I, I now know how to take these kind of pictures, stormy, um, miserable, sleet and rain pictures with my Holga. So how to summarize? To me, improving my own photography relies on two things. Not being lazy, going out when the weather is bad working a little bit longer with this composition, uh, going an extra mile with the model just to get the right expression, put in an effort, and then not believing in luck, but being intentional, having a goal in my mind and working towards that goal um, so that I can, I can get something interesting done or, and I learn some new things. It's about learning, it's about accumulating uh, knowledge and understanding about where do I want to go. Um, getting lucky once, you get a nice picture, planning ahead and then reaching what you plan to reach that teaches you photography and makes you a better photographer. If that's what you want. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Uh, next time something else. See you later.